Developing an interview guide for qualitative research projects can be overwhelming at first. How should you structure the guide? How do you translate theory into specific questions? And what is the difference between open, semi-structured and structured interview guides? Help is on the way. Because in this video, I want to answer all these questions and provide you with a comprehensive tutorial that will allow you to create your interview guide in no time. To ensure that this video is not just semi-structured like a guide, I have divided the process of developing an interview guide into five steps that are easy for you to follow. And by giving you concrete examples for each part of your guide, your preparation will become the foundation for an outstanding research project. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Step 1. Look for an established formula. When developing an interview guide, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The structure for such a guide almost always looks the same. Here's how it goes. Before the interview. The first element of an interview guide includes some instructions for you as the interviewer. These are essentially director's notes that you can follow to initiate the interview. First, introduce yourself. This includes your name, age and the role in which you are conducting the interview. 2. Thank the interviewee for participating. Your interviewees allocate valuable time from their work or even personal life to answer your questions. You shouldn't miss the opportunity to sincerely express your gratitude. 3. Provide a brief hint about the research objective. You shouldn't disclose the specific details or research question in advance, as you don't want to impose any biases on your interviewee. Nonetheless, it is appropriate to give the interview some context so they have a rough idea of why they are part of the study. If you're not sure, you can also pre-formulate and read this hint about the research objective. Of course, you can also deliver it freely, but only if you're very confident. 4. Information on anonymous data handling. Here you can provide the following information. The audio data from this interview will be recorded, transcribed, anonymized and aggregated. The results will be prepared as part of a study at XYZ University. Recordings will be deleted from all devices upon completion of this study. Of course, you should follow through with this after your data collection is completed. 5. Obtain consent. Are you willing to consent to the recording of our conversation for the purposes of this study? I assure you that your Anonymity will be maintained and no inferences about your personal identity will be possible. In some cases, it can also make sense to get their approval via a consent form that you sent the interviewee prior to the interview. 6. Address any open questions. Do you have any questions before we begin the interview? If so, feel free to ask them now. 7. Start recording and press the record button. After the interview. Immediately after the interview, you also have a small section you should incorporate in your guide. First, stop recording. Two, express your gratitude for their participation once again. Yes, even after the interview, you thank them once again. I once had an interview who didn't hang up on time and I could still hear their loud and relieved sigh. Conducting such an interview for an hour or even longer is exhausting and certainly not taken for granted. 3. Announce a report about the results. Remind your interviewee once again that the results will be nicely presented after the study is completed, so they or their organization will gain something tangible from it. This serves as a reminder that they also benefit from participating. Of course, you should follow through with this in the end and even if it's not part of, the, of your assignment or your study, create a cool PDF or some sort of briefing that provides some added value to the participants. 4. Snowballing. 
If you're in the midst of your study and need more interviewees, now is the perfect time to ask if the person knows anyone else who would also be suitable for the interview. Either the person is so fulfilled by the good deed of participating in the study or so exhausted that they insist their friends and colleagues must have the same experience. This way you can skillfully expand your sample. Part 2. Developing interview questions. Now let's move on to the question blocks of your interview guide. The first block is typical for all interviews regardless of the topic. It's all about getting to know the interviewee. Block 1. Personal and organizational information. If your interviewee is not representing an organization or company, you can omit these questions and instead focus on determining their expertise related to the research topic using comparable questions. How old are you? What is your current position in the organization? How long have you been working in the company? How much work experience do you have in your current position? What is the core business of your company? Which industry would you classify your company in? Of course, you can replace company with NGO, association or research institution and so on. Block 2 and the following. Open-ended questions. In these blocks, you develop your main interview questions. A good strategy for that is to divide your guide into blocks. Each block has questions about a particular aspect of your research topic. For a semi-structured interview, it makes sense to move from unstructured to more structured questions. However, in this part of your guide, all questions should be open-ended. This means that the answer cannot be yes or no. Two examples for unstructured questions are the following. Please tell me about your experience while you were working at company X. Or what do you know about topic Y? And here are two examples for structured questions. What are the core values of your organization? Or how do you typically learn new negotiation techniques? Make sure to ask the same structured questions in each interview so you can better compare the answers if needed. So far we have explored examples of interview questions that aim at investigating a certain research topic. However, you might also want to develop your questions based on theory, so you can relate the answers you get to what the literature says or a specific model or theory would predict. Part 3. Using theory to develop interview questions. The following recommendations for developing an interview guide are specifically tailored to a semi-structured theory-driven interview. This means that you conduct your interview with a particular theory or body of literature in mind. You want to explore a research subject to better understand it by applying a pre-existing perspective. The key factors here are first having a theoretical background for your study, which you can learn about in my tutorial on that topic in a different video. Moreover, it's important for you to know that when you develop your guide, you should already be aware how your analysis techniques should look like. So will you employ more of a deductive approach to analyzing the transcripts or is it part of a larger grounded theory uh, study, for example? You can learn all about these types of analysis in other tutorials. In this tutorial, we focus on the data collection and not so much the analysis. Okay, so how do you determine theoretical dimensions? It's quite simple. You just have to consult the literature. To illustrate this, let's look at an example. Suppose you want to understand how the identity of a company is formed when it operates exclusively remotely meaning from home offices or via digital nomads. To understand this phenomenon, you turn to, for example, organizational identity theory. 
according to the authors of this theory, it consists of three different dimensions. The ideational dimension, how the organization understands itself collectively. The definitional dimension, meaning attributes of the organization and the differentiation from other organizations. And third, the phenomenological dimension, meaning actions and discourse in relation to identity. The specific details of each dimension are irrelevant for this example. What's important is that you now consult the theory and break down each dimension into its constituents as described in the papers and books about that theory. Additionally, you should research whether the theory has already been used in previous interview studies in similar contexts. If so, delve into the references and examine the guides used by other researchers. Oftentimes they show them in their appendices. This can serve as a great reference for your own guide, but make sure to cite the corresponding reference. If you can't find any suitable pre-existing guides or questions, you're on your own when developing your interview guide. Let's take the first dimension of the theory as an example. The actions and discourse in relation to identity. Instead of asking this very complicated question directly, you need to read up on how these actions or discourses could manifest. For example, how does the company describe itself in job advertisements? Are company events designed differently? Or how do top managers behave during public appearances? Now you can transform these questions into more pragmatic interview questions. It would also be possible, for example, to create two different guides, one for executives and managers and one for other employees. Here's an example. If you interview the executive, you could ask, how would you describe your company in brief profiles uh, on job ap application platforms? And you could ask the employee, what understanding did you have of the organization before you were hired? Again, you could ask the manager, what impression of your organization do you want to convey when you appear in public? And you could ask the normal employee, in your opinion, what impression do top managers convey when they appear in public? Before we now get to step four of the tutorial, please consider to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content. Thanks. Part four, develop follow-up questions. The semi-structured nature of your guide allows you to formulate follow-up questions to further drive the conversation onwards. You shouldn't interrupt your interviewees ever and should give them as much freedom as possible. However, if they struggle or don't understand the question, you can refer to your follow-up questions. But if the conversation is heading in an interesting direction, ask questions that make sense in that moment. The guide is only semi-structured, meaning you can deviate from it. Sometimes this is the only way to discover truly exciting things. The easiest and most effective follow-up question in all situations is, could you just give an example for this? You will be amazed how good the data is that you can generate from this simple question. For both our executive manager and the other employee, you can ask them, has any of this changed over time since you've been with the organization? Or for the second question, do you differentiate between, let's say, social media, press releases, podcasts, TV and other media? Part 5. Testing and adjusting the interview guide. The beauty of qualitative research designs is that you can move back and forth between the data collection and analysis phases. For a detailed understanding of this process, you can refer to tutorials 
on the topic of hermeneutics. In essence, after conducting, let's say, two to three interviews, you can transcribe or paraphrase them to reflect on the flow and structure of the conversations and the guide itself. If adjustments are needed, you can make them anytime. This iterative process allows your guide to become more coherent with each interview. So don't be afraid that an interview was a waste if everything isn't perfect the first time. Prepare your guide as explained in this video and just go out and test it. The rest will come naturally.